Hi, Dr. Dickerson. Hi, Vicki. It's so nice to see you. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Vicki. How are you guys? Fine, thank you. Oh, oh, uh, well, I'm, um, I'm okay. Hmm. Tell me more, Natalie. Well, sometimes my tummy hurts or I get really angry at my little sister for silly things. Sometimes I feel really sad. Oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. It, it sounds like you might be experiencing some anxiety or some worry. Oh, well, what is anxiety? That sounds like a big, scary word. It does seem like a big, scary word, doesn't it? You know, anxiety can be a feeling word, and it's our brain and our body's way of responding to something that might be dangerous or, or somewhat scary. We all have anxiety, and it's, it's pretty normal, but sometimes it can feel like it's too much, and sometimes it comes out as worry thoughts, like things such as being afraid of the dark, or getting sick, or being worried about doing math, or getting worried about our moms and dads. And sometimes it can lead to things like headaches and stomach aches and, and trouble sleeping. And we may not want to do things that we used to enjoy. Oh. So Dr. Dickerson, what are some common ways that anxiety is presented in elementary kids, especially now during COVID-19? Yeah, that's a good question. There are some big worries that we're all experiencing, right? Things are different and things are uncertain and all of this can lead to some anxiety. Um, in elementary school kids, some common ways that anxiety pre presents can include somatic symptoms like headaches and stomach aches, um, separation issues, could be troubles focusing, kids can become more clingy, um, some kids have more temper outbursts, and rumination, which means like having more worry mm -hmm. thoughts and kids seeking a lot of reassurance in a repetitive way. Wow, why does my brain and body do this? Natalie, our bodies do this to help us deal with stress or scary things. Anxiety can be really helpful sometimes. It, it helps to keep us safe. Um, again, it's pretty natural, but sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming. Well, how can I get rid of it? That's a good question too. You know, anxiety may never go away, but there are a lot of things that you can do to learn to feel better and to prevent your anxiety from becoming too much. Oh, wow. Dr. Dickerson, how do I know if my child is experiencing um, a normal amount of anxiety or worry at this point? Vicki, this can vary from individual to individual. Um, sometimes normal anxiety can evolve into something more serious that can affect a kid's ability to do kid things. And this is when we think it, it sort of rises to the level of, of perhaps seeing somebody or, or talking more about it. And um, we talk, we think about when kid, when it's affecting kids and their ability to play with their friends, it's affecting their ability to sleep through the night, enjoy time with their family, and go to school. So we really look for how anxiety starts to interfere with aspects of a child's life and their family's lives. Thank you. Well, how can I help myself? Well, Natalie, I think the first thing to remember is that anxiety is normal. I have it. Your friends have it, your brothers and sisters have it, and your parents have it too. But again, sometimes it can feel like too much and it makes our bodies feel weird, right? It's okay to ask for help. I think it's important to know that this isn't your fault and you don't have to go through this alone. Worry feelings aren't going to last forever. And so talking about it with a trusted grown up can often be really helpful. Just sort of sharing your feelings can lead to feeling better. And many times anxiety will go away, but it can feel like it can take a long time, right? And during these times, it can be helpful to, to maybe play some games with people that you trust and like to be around. Um, I like a game called five, four, three, two, one. Have you heard of oh, this, wow. Natalie? No, but that sounds really neat. Tell me more yeah. about this. So this, this is a game that helps us to kind of keep ourselves in the present because sometimes worry can lead us to thinking too much about the past or too much about the future. Um, and so five, four, three, two, one is when we sit down and we sort of list things that are around us. Um, five things that we can see, four things that we can hear, three things that we can touch, two things that we smell, 
and one thing that we can taste. And sometimes going through this list can help us to feel better and stay present and what we call grounded. Um, and other relaxing things can be helpful too, like learning how to take deep breaths, doing silly things, having snacks with our family, going outside, getting fresh air, doing some art projects. So all of that can be really helpful. Wow, I really like doing art projects. I have been doing a lot of that. Well, I've been doing homeschooling. Mm -hmm. You do more of those. Yeah, my family has been doing a lot of art projects too. Wow, great ideas. Dr. Dickerson, what are some specific things that care, uh, parents and caregivers can do to help um, manage anxiety with their families? I think first and foremost, it's really helpful to normalize it. Um, you know, parents sort of can say, it's okay to feel this way. Let's talk about it. Um, parents should be validating their child's experience um, and they should actively listen to what their, their child is trying to communicate to them. Um, sometimes kids have some trouble um, which is developmentally appropriate, talking about their feelings, right? Um, so using some pictures or using a feeling chart can be really helpful in, in allowing kids to kind of develop the vocabulary to talk about their emotions. Um, parents can also help their kids kind of practice some basic relaxation techniques, thinking about belly breathing. Um, I saw a great video um, with Elmo um, from Sesame Street, who's been um, doing a fair amount of belly breathing, um, and it can be really fun to practice. Um, and having a lot of routine and structure, as we all know, is really, really important, especially when things have been so uncertain lately, too. Um, I think one of the biggest things that parents can do um, is model calmness. It's really huge that parents are able to kind of um, monitor their own anxiety, um, monitor their own worry, and manage it. Um, and then share that with their kids too. Like, oh, I feel this way too, but here's what I'm doing for myself to help myself get through this. And that can be helpful to kind of figure out things that you can do as a family. The overall goal is to help a kiddo cope with their fears in a, in a constructive way that, that minimizes hopelessness and minimizes helplessness. Because we really wanna think about like fostering confidence um, and fostering self-regulation skills. Um, and that can be done through a variety of ways too. Um, one of the things that I often talk about with the kids and families that I see is really focusing on wellness strategies. And Natalie, we just talked about that, right? Thinking about art projects, thinking about going on walks together, going on hikes as a family, even reading a book together can help kind of bring down some anxiety and worry too. Um, so all of that's really important to think about from a, from a parent perspective as well. You know, you. I've been doing a lot of deep belly breaths. I really like that tool a lot. Hey, let's yeah. all do one together because it makes me feel so good. Are you ready? Deep I'm breath ready. Breath in and exhale. Let's do one more. I like that. Ready? Deep belly breath in and exhale. Wow. That really does help does make me feel better. Good. But Dr. Dickerson, do people feel worry differently? Like what about my big brother and little sister? Do they feel worry differently? Everyone may feel worry a little bit differently, Natalie. That's why it's important to talk about it with a trusted grown up so they can help you and help you in an individual way. Um, when grown ups know what you're feeling, um, then they can be in a better position to help out. So yes, um, people do experience worry differently. Again, you know, your brother may worry about different things than you worry about, depending on sort of his grade at school, um, his friends, um, other sorts of things too. I have a follow-up question to that. Yeah. Um, does COVID-19 worry grown-ups like it worries kids? Is it okay for them to be worried? That's a great question. Um, yes, COVID-19 definitely worries a lot of grownups, like it worries a lot of kids. Um, and so it's okay to have that kind of worry because again, there's a lot of uncertainty happening and we're so used to things being predictable and being structured and knowing, you know, oh, I get to go to school Monday through Friday and here are the friends that I get to see and the classes I get to go to. But um, a lot of that has been really unpredictable lately, and that, that can influence a lot of people's worries. 
Yeah. Dr. Dick Dr. Dickerson, I have a question about schedules. So our yeah. schedules are so different now. How important is good sleep, nutrition, exercise, and managing my child's um, anxiety? Schedules are super important, really, really important. You know, often sticking to a schedule and um, keeping a routine can make a huge difference. And, and even the littlest things um, in terms of having, you know, lunch or dinner um, at the same time every day, um, can be really important. So, um, but also when we're worried, um, when we're worried as parents, we can sort of lose track, right, about our schedules and our routine. And, um, and so it's important for us to kind of also stay present and think about those little things that, that may make a, a pretty big difference in the lives of our families. So Dr. Dickerson, because our parents are worried and because our schedules are different, Sometimes I really need to talk to someone about how my tummy's feeling or if I'm feeling kind of I'm not feeling good about certain things, but sometimes my mom and dad are busy. Who can I talk to? Mm, Natalie, I think it's important to know that um, your doctor's offices are open. Um, and even though doctors may not be seeing a lot of kids face to face, a lot of doctors and pediatricians and, and family practice providers are seeing kids and families just like this over the screen, right? Um, and I know it can be a little weird at times, but it, it can make a huge difference in just knowing that somebody's there to listen and um, perhaps answer some of the questions that you have. So um, again, your doctor's offices are opening and, and they can help moms and dads and grandparents and, and other grownups get the help that they need um, for their kids to, to manage this. Wow, that sounds good. So I could reach out to my doctor. Um, are there other grownups I could talk to about this if I can't talk to my mom and dad? Yeah, I think, you know, not only your doctor, but, you know, the folks at your school might be helpful as well. So even though you're not going into class every day, um, I would imagine that you're still seeing your teacher on occasion, maybe like this from time to time. Yeah. Um, is, has that, how is that going, Natalie? Well, it's really weird because yeah. I used to get to see them in person and, and I still have assignments, but I feel like I'm spending more time on the computer than I was before. I mean, I do really enjoy seeing my teachers and my friends. That's been really wonderful. But it oh, is strange that I'm on the computer so much. Um, and sometimes that makes me feel a little, well, unsure. And then I feel like I, you know, I feel really sad that I miss my friends. And then that's when my tummy starts to hurt again. Yep. Yeah, hopefully, you know, it's going to be helpful knowing that this isn't going to last forever. Um, and so hopefully, you know, in the next handful of weeks to months, like you'll be able to spend more and more time with your friends and, and, and talk about a lot of the fun things that you did um, during this time too. But also, you know, at school, there's the guidance counselor, there's the school nurse. Um, and so they're also still available um, to talk with kids when questions come up too. Yeah, well, that's a really good idea, Dr. Dickerson. So if my mom and dad are busy, I can talk to my teacher when I have my meetings with her online. That's yeah. a good idea. And I can practice my art and remember to take deep breaths. And I'll look up that game you were talking about. Oh, tell me the name of that game again. I call it five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, I really like that. That will keep my mind busy. That's, That's important. So neat. What if um, my family wants to find out more information about this or doesn't know what to do, maybe to help with their worries and or maybe to help me and my 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 brother and sister and our worries what who, who could we talk to well i would imagine that there's folks at the vermont family network who can be of help and support for families just to provide some guidance and um, kind of point to um, information that can be found online um, that can be really helpful for parents too yeah we love the people at Vermont Family Network. Yay. Thank you so much, Dr. Dickerson. And thank you so much, Vicki, for talking to me today about this. It's really helpful because 
I think when I talk about what's making me feel worried, it really helps. And now remember I can take deep belly breaths and I can work as for focus on my artwork and other games to keep my mind busy and knowing that there's adults that I can talk to about this. Like you, Dr. Dickerson, like you, Vicki. So thank you so much. Yeah, you're um, very welcome, Natalie. Well, it was great talking to you both. Have a great rest of your day. You too, Bye. take care. Bye-bye.